Shalom and greetings, everybody. Brother Nicholas James Vanderlane, Victory for the People of Israel from By the Narrow Path, which are the Ten Commandments. Today is the tenth day of the sixth month on Elohim Zeta Priest Dead Sea Scroll Enoch Solar Calendar. It is Wednesday, August 28, 2019. And this video is titled Exposing Esther is a Jewish Fable. Paul warned us. So this is part two to a video that I did previously. In part one of this video series, I gave many reasons why I believe Esther is a fake work. I have since given more contemplation, and the Spirit of Truth led me into more truth to support my original video. To recap part one, the Masoretic versions of Esther in almost all of the Western Bibles, the book of Esther has no name of Yahweh, who the author. It does have a hidden acrostic, but like I said, that is a signature of the synagogue of Satan. There is no petition prayer to Yahweh Elohim related to the fast. There is no intervention by Yahweh Elohim. And there is no glory given to Yahweh Elohim. It goes to Esther. In addition, Master Yeshua, the Messiah, also Peter, James, John, and Jude, and even Paul, never mention Esther, never reference Esther, never quote Esther. The book of Esther was not found among the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yes, there is a fragment some scholars try to argue as proto-Esther, but when you look and see the script, which I'll display on the screen right now, you will see that the words does not even come close to match anything in Esther. Also in part one of the Esther video, I mentioned that there is a Greek Septuagint version of Esther, which is not in most Western Bibles. But I didn't get into the details as much as I like. Not that many people are familiar with the Greek Septuagint version of Esther. What is interesting about that version is that it contains all of the missing elements in the form of additions to the Masoretic text. These spiritual elements that you would expect to see in inspired scripture. It contains the name of Yahweh. It contains a prayer to Yahweh related to the fast. Intervention by Yahweh Elohim and glory is given to Yahweh Elohim. Upon reading the Greek Esther, one would be persuaded it to be inspired scripture. But after giving it serious contemplation and thought and reasoning, it makes no sense why these elements would have been singled out and removed from the Masoretic version, the Hebrew version of the text. Yes, the Masoretes here and there changed a couple of words of some, of some text. They played with vowel points too. But to remove significant segments which give the appearance to validate the text as inspired scripture makes no sense. Again, it makes no sense to remove these elements from the Masoretic version, but rather it makes complete sense for a religious scribe or religious scribes plural who love their tradition, especially the tradition of the esteemed and glorious Queen Esther, to make additions to the story in attempt to bring validation to the story. Thus, tr attempting to turn the story or fable into what they perceive to be scripture, but it's counterfeit scripture. Here is Brenton's commentary of the additions of the Greek Septuagint of Esther found in his Septuagint version of the Bible. Additions to Esther. These additions to the canonical Esther supply it with a preface and a conclusion and expand the narrative in three places. They were probably written to give a more definite religious character to the book. The writer of the additional chapters was probably an Egyptian Jew who wrote in Greek in the 1st or 2nd century BC. Many others, even Jewish scholars, agree that these are additions added. If you go to myjewishlearning.com, you can see that the consensus in this article is that it was the, that these are additions to the text. Now, back to Esther being a fable. Let me bring you through the foundational storyline, as I said in my previous video. Chapter 1 reads as a lesson to wives to submit and reverence their husbands, or else they'll be put away. Chapter 2 reads as a romance novel as the king sent throughout the land to get the most beautiful virgins to find a replacement queen. Their virgins were prepared for an entire year for their encounter with the king, and they were prepared in the house of the women. And their preparation took a full year, 
And after their preparation, they would spend a night with the king in the king's house. And the following day, they would transition from the king's house to the house of the concubines. As the king was breaking in a new virgin on a regular basis, it was Esther's turn. And she was so attractive, and it was such amazing sex, she was made queen. And once queen, she later saves her people. One of the additions in the Greek version of Esther is quoted to say that she despises the bed of the uncircumcised, which means that she must have been a very good, quote-unquote, actress. Beyond this, when one looks at the fiction of the story, the fiction is as sensationalized to, to the verge of unbelievable. Haman built a gallows 75 feet high, or 50 cubits. This would have taken significant resources to build just to hang one man on. It makes no sense. The whole book reads as a novel, as, or as Paul wrote and warned us, quote, a Jewish fable. In Titus 1 verse 14, Paul wrote to Titus saying not to give heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Note how the Jewish fables are connected with the commandments of men. We all know that commandments of men were the tachinote of the Pharisees, or the extra rules they levied on the people. Thus, the Jewish fables would have also have been pushed by the same people, just as it is done this day, as Esther is one of the most esteemed books of the ultra-Orthodox Hasmonean Jews and the Benjaminite Jews. There is nothing new under the sun. After the book of Job, Esther appears to be the second longest continuous story in the Bible. But Job is a discourse while Esther is a story. So actually, Esther could be the longest continuous story in the Bible. Esther was Jewish, and she saved her people who were Jewish, the Jewish people, and thus qualifies as a literal Jewish fable Paul warned us about. As I said, Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees, and he didn't quote it, reference it, or use Esther as a type. When Paul warned Titus, Titus was on the island of Crete. To understand why Paul would warn Titus on this matter, because of Crete's location to Alexandria, Egypt. Now, Alexandria, Egypt was where the Alexandrian Jews, who were the custodian of the Greek Septuagint, were based, and they were not fluent in the Hebrew. Given the geographical locations, the Alexandrian Septuagint would have naturally spread to Crete via the shipping trade routes. So it makes total sense for Paul to warn Titus who was in Crete, considering that it would have been the next stop out of Alexandria on their way up to Greece. Interesting, Paul warned of Jewish fables, plural, and also in the Greek Septuagint is at least one other fable that has similar aspects as Esther that being the book of Judith. Like Esther, the book of Judith, Judith was a Jewish heroine who was also portrayed as a very beautiful woman who would make frequent night trips to the tent of an army captain of the Assyrians. And one night, the man to sleep and killed the man, thus saving her Jewish people. This story is something straight out of an espionage playbook. Again, we see the qualifications to make the book of Judith a Jewish fable. One is continuous story, nine chapters. Two, a beautiful Jewish heroine who saves her Jewish people by having sex. The story has no intervention of Yahweh. The story does have prayer because after every night she went into the tent, she would later mikvah and then pray at midnight. This story is a Jewish fable. Now back to the book of Esther. One more major problem with the book of Esther is there is no archaeological evidence or history records that exist that corroborate the story of Esther. Zero. In fact, there is contrary information. I believe Esther and Judith to be at least two Jewish fables Paul warned us about in his letter to Titus. They are not inspired text and to be avoided. Please consider this presentation if you had not done so already. A link to this document will be found in the description box below. Please take heed to this information and be warned. And shalom to all who receive this information. Shalom to you.